Nikolai, how are we doing? The town's crawling with those freaks. No chance of fighting our way out of the city. Why is she here? She's helping get the trains running again. Bad time to start getting dead weight for it. She's unreliable. Can't pull the trigger when it counts. Hello, this is Nikolai Genovyev, uh, the voiceover actor for Neil Newborn in Resident Evil 3. You're checking out the Resident Evil database, the right place for uh, Resident Evil fans. Oh, so I don't get paid now. What do you mean there's no money? Killing your own people? He would have turned. There's your sense of self-preservation. So, um, hello. Uh, I got the chance to work on Resident Evil 3 as both Nikolai and Nemesis. Um, for, I went through the normal audition process. I was asked by the director, Steve Knebley, who's um, a, a long-time collaborator and a, a fantastic and amazingly accomplished director, a real actor's director. He asked me to come in to read specifically for Nikolai. And um, I was thrilled at the chance, because obviously I'm a gamer and massive Resident Evil fan, as millions of us are. And uh, I knew the character. I even played the game badly uh, many years before the original. And um, yeah, so I went over to LA. I had a couple of days to get to LA from the job I was doing in the UK and um, and fly over, do the audition, then fly back to carry on doing the job in the UK. So it was a bit of a whirlwind, really. Um, and then when we uh, got to Japan, I think that was when the discussions were started about um, potentially me playing Nemesis as well, which was an amazing opportunity. And I'm very honored that both he and the Capcom team and uh, all felt that I could do it. In a manner of speaking, you are. Our employers wanted a detailed analysis of the zombie beings which were created through infection by the T-Virus. I, as I yeah, just stated, I played uh, original RE3, I also RE1 and 2 equally badly. Um, I'm not very good at the <laughs> Resident Evil games, um, so I'm really familiar with them. Um, when I came to the character, especially when I was um, coming to the audition, I, I never tried to, I always try to uh, avoid um, taking somebody else's performance and their choices. Um, I think it's that th their performance was their choice in that iteration of that version of the game. Um, I don't often play characters that have been created before, which is actually quite nice in some respects, um, because obviously their performances are complete in themselves. And um, But to be offered a, a chance to recreate something was f is very interesting. Um, but I like to come to it relatively fresh. So I, I start from the script, I start from the background information, the plots, um, the, the information that's given in the plot and any background reading that I'm, I'm given as opposed to trying to recreate some another actor's performance I think it's um, more useful for an actor to come fresh and go right who is this person to me uh, what do they do how does that affect me as an actor um, what happens inside my instrument when these things um, occur and where, where are the ideas and, and things coming from otherwise I think you can be led down a path that is uh, not necessarily truly organic I think you can start thinking oh that was cool maybe I should try and recreate that thing as opposed to thinking, well, how is this person as a real human being? How do I, how do I um, relate to that person? You see? You're learning. The only life that matters is your own. So, going a bit further into my creative process, without telling you too much, because I find that a lot of my uh, tools and the things that I use to, in rehearsals and even on the shoot days, I like to keep quite private, because um, I find if I talk too much about them, they tend not to work. <laughs> so, I mean, the basic things which most actors do, I'm in fact not, you know, uh, most actors I'm, I should do this, is of course um, researching the character, making the choices about facts, maybe isolating some things like the characterizations, um, uh, in, in terms of their characteristics, the facets of their personality, uh, before even moving on to movement and starting to work out how they move and the kind of clothes they like to wear and detailing their life, really filling out these details of their life that probably will never go into the final product um, production, will never go into the final shoot, will never come through in performance, but for the actor they're super important to understand the person's real life. How do they, what do they eat? What do they like to listen to? You know, what do they hate most about people or the world? And what do they love the most? These things all kind of help support the actor to then live the character's life in a sense. And when you're certainly in the volume and when you're in the scene, I think it does allow you a lot more freedom to go places that you might not if you don't do any preparation for a character. Um, there's many other things that I do. Um, I, I did occasionally talk about, I, I do make a musical list, which informs me of the heartbeat of the character. I do that for most of my main characters. 
um, because I find it helps finding a rhythm uh, for movement, speech and all kinds of things. Um, I also tend to steal from real people in real life that I've met on my journey and uh, use really cool or interesting things that I think can fit into a character for the right reasons, obviously. Um, So yeah, I I sometimes steal from my friends and, and (laughs) and people I've met along the way. Interesting. You have done me a big thing. Playing Nemesis was a real added bonus. I genuinely didn't think I was going over there for that role until Steve asked me with the with Capcom team. It was uh, awesome. It was so cool. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the, again, the process was a bit more involved than Nikolai in terms of other people's input because... Uh, the Capcom team felt it was really important to get the character right, as did Steve and as did I, but they were quite specific about character movements and we worked uh, together, all of us, to find the right movement without being too much or too little, finding the right threat without being too much or too little, and finding also the physiology of him um, uh, as well as the psychology of the of the creature. Um, to get the right impetus and to make it like genuinely affecting and scary without kind of hamming up those movements without making it unnecessary. I think the one thing that we try to strive for is an economy of movement with this character because otherwise it might tend to become a little theatrical. We didn't want that. We wanted realistic and, and ter- you know, truly scary because it could be completely real. Um, I did shout out stars quite a lot <laughs> on set, sometimes over lunch. Uh, no, I did use that quite a lot. However, I believe it is not my... Uh, voiceover that that does that line. I think it's one of the um, developers themselves, actually, whose name I will track down and I will uh, go on social media to say hello to because he is as much part of that performance as I am. Um, so uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm semi responsible for movement, uh, but the actual um, voice uh, performer was actually somebody else. Yeah, voicing Nikolai. Um, so I spent a lot of time in England, um, especially before and, uh, well, I didn't have much time before, but I, but certainly the little time I had before and definitely after uh, working on the accent to try and find his accent, which we, we I decided that we st- I'd start with a very heavy Russian accent and then try and dial it back and then add the fact that he's world traveled, that he's been in conflict zones around the world, that... He has lived many places. He's, you know, had to, I guess, sort of blend into different cultures in some, in some respects, to maybe hide or to stalk or to investigate or whatever he's doing. He's had a very long career in military and private contracting um, as a mercenary. So I think it was important to give an element of worldliness to his accent, as well as making it, you know, um, Eastern European and Russian specifically. Nikolai, what are you doing? It's not after me. <laughs> um, Capcom described the character in a kind of very helpful way. Um, they gave me lots of information and some very strong characteristics about him. Um, I like Nikolai in some respects. I don't judge him, by the way. So he, he may be a quote-unquote bad guy. But for me, I always love my characters, and I always try and find the positivity in them. Even if they do bad things, it's really about why they do the, these things. So for me, um, this character is highly motivated, very driven, very focused, has a great survivor ability, which I think is very admirable in human beings. Um, he is amoral or immoral, I guess, and that's not so great, but, um, but I don't judge him for it. It's just the way that he's built and the way he's had to learn to survive. Um, he's also incredibly capable and very very good at what he does um and so from those points it was kind of nice to jump into the shoes of somebody because i'm i'm sometimes quite clumsy outside of the volume whereas in the volume i seem incredibly precise (laughs) so in a way it helps me sort of you know find his strength and sort of (laughs) some of those movements when in real life i probably drop everything put on a good show and maybe i don't need a grip good Uh, favorite moment for playing Nikolai? I really liked his entrance. Um, I thought it was cool as fuck to introduce a character like that, where he just comes in and shoots uh, Todd Habercorn's character, Murphy, in the head. Um, also, funnily enough, the mocap was done by Jeff because it was only like one scene, and, and it wasn't really fair to fly Todd that far out to do that scene. So Jeff filled in for the mocap. So I got to shoot two, well, Todd's now a friend, so <laughs> he's forgiven me, I guess. Um, but we, we're both, uh, all three of us, are, oh, I'm, I'm friends with both of them. So it was kind of fun to be able to do that and, uh, and shoot both of them in the head, kind of. 
don't know what that says about me, but it's not real, so I guess we can enjoy that. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I also really liked a lot of the work that I did with Jill. I mean, uh, and specifically, obviously, the actor Nicole Tompkins. Nicole, Jeff, and I are extremely close friends, and I loved every minute I had with them. On set and in between, we had a lot of fun in Japan and Tokyo. We got to know each other very, very well. Nicole and I and Jeff have all worked together a few times now on things I can't mention, but we can talk about this. Um, and it's been great um, to get to work with actors, as I've been so lucky in my career to have done so. Um, actors are so generous, so talented, and, and bring an awful lot of interesting insight and thoughts and also organic moments to their characters. Nicole is an amazing Jill. I think she's also a modern Jill, that she's tough. She's playful, but at the same time, you know, Nicole herself I isolated a few moments in the script that she thought could maybe re reinforce. Um, my running joke with Nicole was, was always, it's called a radio. <laughs> so I think the fact she isolated that and then made it into a very funny, interesting line without, you know, um, without killing the line, but for the sake of it, just actually trying to make something really interesting with it, was sort of indicative of how great it is to work with her and how fun it is to work with Jeff, who can make any cheesy line sound cool, which I think is a disturbingly, uh, is a disturbing quality for any human being to be able to, to do that. Because <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> I don't think so, anyway. Um, so yeah, I, I, my favourite moments are really playing with Steve um, and Jeff and Nicole, and also the wonderful Bill Hope, who is extraordinary in everything that he does, and is a wonderful actor to play with. Um, and it was great to work with Darren O'Hare as well, and, you know, we had, we had a really nice cast. Um, and yeah, I, I'm, I've worked with Bill before as well. I've been very lucky to work with Bill Hope on um, Planet of the Apes franchise as well. And he's just terrific. He's a really giving, interesting, uh, intricate, detailed actor who has a lot of fun and is just very, very good. And it's just nice to be inspired by people that I'd I have come to call friends and I still speak to. You're a fool. You're a fool! If I die... Never find out the is Nikolai dead? Well, somebody pointed out there was a second helicopter in the shot. Um, I don't know, man. I mean, it's up to the audience, really. And I guess the Capcom guys? <laughs> I would love to play Nikolai again. So in my mind, if anybody says, is he dead? I said, absolutely not. This, he completely ran out over, he completely ran away from a nuclear explosion somehow. And I don't know how that would work, but I guess he kind of, I don't know. I hope he's not dead because I would love to play him again. Um, but whether he's dead or not, I don't know, man. Uh, ask Capcom. <laughs> I can't tell you about some of the games I'm in. Um, there's, I've done quite a few games since I did Resident Evil 3. Um, most of them are still locked down under NDA. I'm trying to have a quick think about things that I can actually tell you. I did uh, recently had a thing called um, We Happy Few with Nick Lightbearer that came out. And that was so much fun to play. It was brilliant. It was like basically playing a mixture of Barry, Mark Bolan and, and, a, and one of my friends from school. It was really fun. Uh, <laughs> um, is there anything else I can tell you about, dude? Vaccine, you greedy son of a bitch! No, 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 no. You and money. I like them. We shall make ours an ongoing arrangement. Uh, there's a very big RPG that I'm voicing at the moment, which is going to be about a year and a half project long. I'm super excited about it, but I can't tell you about it. Uh, there's a project in. Hungry O shooting, which is going to be absolutely extraordinary when it comes out and just hugely epic. Again, I can't tell you about that either. There's something I was doing in LA that's just going to be so cool. I got to work with some really interesting people. Can't tell you about that. And I just got back before the, uh, before the lockdown from Japan. And again, can't mention that kind of really fun project. Um, yeah, so loads of stuff, none of which I'm going to tell you about. You know how it is. City's about to explode. And you can put a price on life! <laughs> Good luck! Um, so I just want to say a um, huge thank you to the Resident Evil database for having me, and also to the RE fanbase, um, especially for those people that, for some bizarre reason, uh, really get a kick out of Nicol uh, Nikolai. So thank you very much indeed for your interest. I really appreciate the support. And uh, my private life is quite private, but you know I really enjoy the public work that I do, and I really enjoy hearing back from people that they enjoy the experience. Um, don't give much in the way in terms of like, I don't worry too much about criticism and that because honestly, if you had a reaction 
everything to my characters I've done my job even if you hate them um, so yeah thank you very much for, for all the support and thank you for welcoming me into this universe with such open arms I would like to add one thing I guess um, all of us on the planet right now are experiencing something that in most people's living memory uh, has never happened before we are witnessing a worldwide pandemic um, and regardless of your view on how serious it is, um, it's, it's serious enough for all of us to try and take action. And I think that's the point, that this is the first time in a very, very long time that genuinely people have been forced as a globe to come together and work together and to feel all of us uh, the same in this regard. We're all going through it, whether in different circumstances or not, obviously is, is completely unique to the individual, but, but we're all humans and we're all in this and we're all having to now look at the way that our world works and and look at the faults that we've been talking about for a long time and haven't done that much about and i, I really hope that many things will come many good things will come out of this one of which you know um i don't believe in the word race i think it, it it's um it's an unfortunate term that was used from to justify the slave trade um we're all one race we're all human uh, there are many different ethnic backgrounds and nationalities and cultural things, that's absolutely true. But we're all human. There's one race, and it's all of us, and we're all in this together. Um, racism exists, obviously. Human beings have been horrible to other human beings for no reasons other than just power and inferiority, I guess. But we have to maybe embrace this idea that, although we may look slightly different, that's the best thing about being human, is that we're all different. I mean, how cool that everybody has a difference, everybody's unique in that way. So I really hope that this world gets a little closer, a lot closer, and people stop viewing each other with this unnecessary point of view that different is somehow bad. Um, and also, you know, we all know about our environment. You know, this is, we see how, how devastating the pollution has been to the planet and how our personal lives uh, do impact on this. And maybe going forward, we can see what a better world it would be without various things that pollute the planet and without, you know, things that we think, quote unquote, we need or use. So maybe we can all take stock. Uh, also, I would like to say to all of you in isolation, especially those who are really alone, um, times will move, they will change. This is not forever. This is something that you will get through. Uh, if you're lucky enough like me to be with uh, family or loved ones, then you know this time can be really productive and interesting. And if you are alone and you feel scared and af afraid, just know that this time will pass. It will change. And there are things you can do to help yourself. Um, it is going to require a lot of, um, a little bit of hard work or a challenge or just even to us to get up out of bed if you feel depressed and sad and afraid. We can do this. You can do this. Um, you just need to start thinking maybe in a different way than you have been before if you feel like this. Go on the internet. If you have the internet, which I, you know, obviously if you can listen to this, then you would do. Um, find something new that you've never done before. Find a different way of cooking. Find an exercise regime you've never done before, which doesn't require any equipment. Um, find a way to learn a new language or take an interest in something. I know it's difficult and it's going to be hard. And I speak from a privileged position of having my loved ones um, around me. But you can do this. And this community, I think, really brings people together. And I think that's super important at the moment. And it's so amazing to see so many people in the RE community um, together having a shared experience and feeling hopefully some solace and some togetherness from that. So yeah, uh, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Much love, peace, and uh, yeah, see you around. Carlos! No! <laughs> Knew you couldn't pull the trigger. <laughs> <laughs>